All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is what happens when the denominator of a rational function is zero. Now, you probably know that you cannot divide by zero, right? You can't divide anything by zero. If I have one cookie and I want to divide it among zero people, what does that even mean? Or if I'm trying to figure out how many groups of zero I can make out of one, uh, I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't, it just doesn't make sense, right? Dividing something by zero is undefined. And so we're going to look at what happens with these rational functions when the denominator is zero, right? Those are points where that rational function is undefined. And what we get is a vertical asymptote, okay? Okay, it's an, it's an asymptote, but now it's vertical, all right? So vertical means up and down. And so that's essentially up and down through the x value where the function is undefined, right? So if we have, if the denominator of the function is zero at the point at when x is equal to a, then that, then um, we can draw a line through um, x equals a, right? It'll be a horizontal line. And we know that the, val the function cannot have a value at that point, right? So it's not part of the domain. So unless we, well, and I can't, it's not part of the domain. Now, if, if we have uh, the numerator also has a, a, a zero at, um, at A, then we have a hole, just like we saw in the last examples when we talked about zeros, we end up with a hole, okay? So, but if, if we don't have that, that common factor between the numerator and the de denominator, right? If the numerator is not also zero at x equals a, then we, what we have is a vertical, vertical asymptote. And we'll see, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about what happens near a, a vertical asymptote when we do the next example. But for now, we're going to call it a, a vertical asymptote. It's just a line that goes through, um, if we were to graph this function, we'd, we'd, we, would, we, we would draw, say, a dashed line at x equals a. And that the function, the rational function, cannot um, take on a value at, uh, at that x value. Okay, so what we need to do is look at when the denominator is zero. All right, so these are the same functions that were in the last example. So, but now I'm going to look at the denominator, right? This is x minus 7, and I can factor the denominator. It's this difference of two squares. It's x plus 4 and times x minus 4. All right, so I can see that I... Um, the values of x that would cause the denominator to be 0 would be minus 4 and plus 4. So we're going to have um, vertical, vertical asymptotes, asymptotes at, at, oops, at, um, well, let me just say, oops, asymptotes at, <laughs> um, x equals minus 4 and x equals 4, okay? So if we were to graph this, we'd just put a dashed line through those, uh, a vertical, or yeah, a vertical dashed line through x equals negative 4 and 4, all right? Now, just, this is again the same function that we saw in the last, um, the last example. Here we have a, a common denominator, which will cancel except at x equals minus 3. So just like we saw um, before, we're going to have a hole at um, x equals minus 3. All right. And outside of x equals minus 3, you can see the denominator would be 0 at x equals 2 and x equals minus 1. So we're going to have vertical, vertical asymptotes, asymptotes at x equals 2 and x equals minus 1, okay? Because those are the values that would cause g of x to be undefined. So we're just going to block those x values out with an asymptote. All right, this last one, if we look at x squared minus 9, right? x squared, um, or sorry, x squared plus 9, right? x squared plus 9, does that ever equal 0? Um, no, because if you, if you're trying to solve for zero, you'd end up with x squared equals minus nine and you can never square 
either a positive or a negative value and get a, ne a negative value, right? So, so this one will have no vertical, vertical asymptotes. Asymptotes. Oops. All right. So now we've identified where those asymptotes will be, and um, we're gonna in the next uh, example we're gonna look at using this information to graph a rational function.